on DAB, smartphone app, and around the world on StarpointRadio.com. Your real alternative, Starpoint Radio. Welcome to Starpoint Radio, your own radio station. How are you doing? I'm not too bad. How are you? Do you think I knew you when you were Carl Starpoint, and now you're Carl Barrington Webster? Right. Do you want an explanation to that? No, no, no. We know why it's Facebook, right. isn't it? It's yeah. Facebook. So one yeah. day in 1985, you thought, oh, I'll start a radio yeah. station. I'm not sure if it was really like that. It was a collaboration of, uh, at the time, we was doing Radio Activity and K-Jazz. Do you remember any of those stations? Or I don't remember that one. Mm. So we was basically doing those two those two stations, and we just thought, you know, you know, and it was just weekends then, Gary. It was just one studio, and everybody came to the studio to do their shows. And uh, so it's a different day now to how we're doing things. But yeah, but it was just a, co- you know, we just thought, you know, let's make one station. Me and Chris Phillips were working for Vision Hire at the time, and we just decided to put one station on, and that station was Starpoint. So. It must be your passion radio, is that right? Yeah, yeah, I suppose it is. It's not. It's a speech-based radio I'm sort of into as well. Obviously, soul music radio as well. So, yeah, radio is a thing that's always sort of had my attention from a young age. So, as a pirate king, did you ever worry about getting caught or, or was that part of the buzz? Well, I mean, I never actually got caught. Quite a few people around me got caught, probably because of my mistakes as well. But um, yeah, it didn't really need to. Uh, it didn't really worry me. They were sort of always on our case at the time, and it was a bit hairy at times, and it was a worry for a lot of people. But it was. I think the music. You know, we wanted to get the music out there. There was very little to listen to then. So, so times have kind of changed with the internet and everything else. So from, the, from the old days, I suppose you used to be climbing up roofs and putting aerials up and goodness what else, yeah. finding studios, yeah. and basements, and now it's all online, isn't it? Well, yeah, I mean, we used to have a friend called Michael Desmond, who's a Labour councillor now. And at that time, we used to sort of have his rooftop at Crystal Palace, uh, 24-hour access. <laughs> he didn't care whether the, the, the authorities came to take, off, take us off there and left us on there. I think he was giving him about 25 quid a week then, which was quite a bit of money then. And, uh, and that's how it really all started. And, yeah, from then to sort of putting up aerials and now relying on the internet to broadcast, it's a complete, complete different scenario now. So does it make you rich running a radio station? I would have imagined that most people that are running internet stations that are internet-based are probably doing it for the love. <laughs> So you wouldn't advise anyone to do it as a business to start? Oh, we, no, I, I, I personally not. I mean, if you look at if you look, if you look at the amount of radio stations that are on now because of the internet, I mean, it's some people say it's a good thing that you've got choice, but then you dilute the already small audience, in my opinion. Okay, and you, you, you're all above board. You do all the PRS and all that kind of stuff. Oh yeah, we, of course you've got to do PRS, PPL. Now that we're on sort of three DABs as well, we've also got to you know deal with Ofcom, who I you know have a history of uh, disliking immensely, <laughs> and I make that clear about it as well. So I I tend to mess them about when their fees are due. I pay them late. They can put me on their notice board. Oh, Starpoint Radio is a naughty radio station. Is that, is, that, is that what we're known as, a naughty station? Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. We all can join Andy T's naughty step then. So what's the high points and what's the low points of uh, running Starpoint Radio? All right, well, the high points are, the, I think, you know, I'm just looking at your your peaks and we can see that we've got a lot of people listening to this and I, I suppose that's because of me. <laughs> yeah, I suppose it is, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, yeah, yeah the, the the joy that people, I mean, when I see you guys, on, I mean, let's remember, we can't run a radio station without DJs. So the DJs that we've got on Starpoint, and I, I think a lot of the listeners are not aware of this, but most of them are coming from their own locations. So they make a big investment on getting equipment, mixers, CD players, which I didn't tell you about when you started. No, up. you didn't. You uh, said and, I knew yeah. the computer. That's what you said. Yeah. Well, I would have thought a man of your caliber, Gary, <laughs> Disco Gold, would have had a mixer and CDs lying around, to be honest with you. But yeah, most of the guys get their own equipment together. We do have a studio in Crystal Palace. 
but we've got very few Londoners on the station. So the only ones that ever come to the studio are really Steve Collins, who will be coming back soon, I believe, and me or Ian, if we do decide to do something just off the cuff. But, you know, you guys, you know, from Ray Bradshaw, Ray Bradshaw has his own studio, Nigel Waymark, Andy Tucker, yourself, Steve King, and even a lot of the guys in the evenings now, Steve, uh, sorry, Richard, Richard Short and N Nigel Fox, all got their own studios, all coming from their own location. So you do lose that element of missing, seeing everyone when they come to do their show, which was completely different in the pirate days where all the DJs used to just come to one central point, do their radio show and twin off. And there was no, and all this, and a big change again is, is Facebook where the, 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 uh, the listener now has access to the DJ. So they can actually contact the DJ there and then, and the DJ can sort of give them an acknowledgement on air. And I think quite a few of the listeners tend to like that. Am I right? I think I think they do. Well, it's nice because you can tell you can you feel like you're talking to them. Where in the old days when you used to uh, do parlor with no internet, you were just talking to a wall. Now you're actually talking to people because they're there. Well, no, in the, in the pirate days, though, Gary, I'll just interject there. In the pirate days, people used to write letters. Oh, yeah. so we, <laughs> right, Dear John. so we used to. Yeah, so we used to sort of get quite a lot of mail, you know, hundreds. You'd go down to, ooh, again, you'd have to, uh, have, you'd have to have a mailing address, and we had one down at Stockwell Road, and we'd go down there every day, and we'd be picking up hundreds and hundreds of letters. Goodness. So that's where the, the so we we get very little letters now, but we get a a lot of um, Facebook messages, and we've got the Star Point ch chat room where people are free to com comment on the station, whether it be good or bad. So what's the best way of listening to Starpot Radio? How would, how would you listen to it? Well, I, I've got a Wi-Fi radio. So I've got a Wi-Fi radio connected to speakers. So I don't go to a computer at all. I just go to the radio. And that you can set preset these your stations as well. So I just go to a radio with a preset. It's a button and start listening to Starpoint. So I don't go to a computer at all. So have, have you downloaded the app? <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. Well, I mean, I've, we've also got the app. Well, you did say how I listen to it. Yeah, I did, yeah, I did. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I listen. I do sometimes listen to the app when I'm sort of driving around, get a lead from the phone into my auxiliary of the car and listen to Starpoint on the app, for sure, yeah. So how many hours a day do you listen to Starpoint? It's on all the time. So yes. it will be on. The first thing I get up, the first thing I do is put it on and make sure Ray's on. But sometimes things can go wrong overnight, and Ray, you know, so Ray, when Ray comes on, the radio just stays on, doesn't go off. So is it kind of stressful running a radio station? Yeah, of course, for sure. I mean, you know, because of the internet, again, there's so many different things that can go wrong. Now, if you're just a, if you're a listener and you're listening to one of our streams, then all right. So, so you're listening to Gary now. So Gary's audio leaves his computer on an IP address it's then set then i pick it up at the london studio and then we put it out to our servers and then you guys connect to one of the links so just for the listener that they get some sort of idea that you know we've got servers in liverpool and london so you can imagine the amount of internet that is required just to listen to one string it's clever isn't it and you've, yeah, and you've, very also, much so. you've got backup facilities as well, haven't you? Yeah, we've also got Bournemouth, where uh, Spot Steve Warner, minor shareholder in the station, I might add. Um, he's in he's in Bournemouth, so we have a he has a server in Bournemouth as well, and I have one here in Crystal Palace. So Spot's your partner. He's on the technical side of things, isn't he? Yeah. So Spot's been Spot's been with me since the pirate days. I think I, I think he's been with me since about eighty five or eighty six. So, um, and he takes care of a lot of the, t I do a lot of the technical stuff as well, but he's always the fail safe for things that I can't do. Swat normally sorts them out, as you know. So just asking, what, what are your hobbies? I mean, do you, do you go golfing or do you go fishing or anything like that? What do you, what do, you do to relax? Oh, well, I, 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 you know what I do to relax now? I put on holiday events. <laughs> <laughs> That's my relaxation. No, I'm sort of 24 hours a day. So I'm... Um, sleep about three hours a day if that sometimes but it's what i've done from the 80s really so yeah so from the 80s i've never really had that much sleep and it's continued into later life hasn't it really so how many hours do you have on that on average 
on average on the station. No, how hours sleep do you do you sleep? Oh gosh. Well, three to five hours a day. Oh, goodness. I mean, I know you're yeah. always there at midnight. You're always there first thing in the morning. Well, most kind of first thing in the morning. Uh -huh. And I was thinking to myself, I wonder how often you know you do sleep because. It takes a lot of time running on a radio station, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, I, I'll give you, for instance, what we had to do yesterday. We had Robbie Peter start last night, didn't he? Yeah, the, the 11 and 1, and that sort of, again, more expansion of the station, where we now got somebody live after 11 o'clock, which, which was a first for a while. And that meant I had to do all the coding for two TCs, and that also means giving him a Dropbox account that he, we can have a backup show in just in case the internet goes down. So bear in mind that, you know, sometimes the DJ's internet can go down. Yeah. And instead of us being off air, we then sort of have a, a backup show ready of that presenter as the play just in case. So there's been a lot of times recently, I'm hoping the listener does hear this that this, very rarely we go dead air now on Starpoint we maybe sort of have to go to a backup stream and then as that happens you'll always be able to hear the station on our home page so if we ever have any technical difficulties always refresh your page and go to our home page because that's where our backup server is that we're always on and that's really sort of made the stations flow a lot more better and you know with um, listeners are tuning in and not tuning away I mean, um, and, and we've got to give credit to a bit there to Steve King, really, haven't we? Because he yeah. was the first one that I convinced to do five shows a week. And that was, what, four years ago, I think? Was yeah. it something like that? Yeah. And so Steve King was the, was the only one doing four, five shows a week. And then we had, I believe, yourself came along then we had uh, Nig the, the Nig one of the Nigels then Andy Tucker and then uh, or did Ray come before I can't remember but then very quickly we filled up the uh, daytime programming which for an internet soul station there's only another two that are doing that so since I joined it's just over two years now so the, yeah. there's more and more live shows as you just said isn't there and it's the way forward I presume well, you know what, we, uh, and we've had so many discussions with this as a team, but we've also got to remember that some of our pre-record shows are very well-respected. Mike Stevens, in particular, gets a huge audience on a Sunday night, along with Mark Merry, Paul Goldsmith, Roger Williams, and uh, Kevin Oxbury, and those, you know, and, there's, and Chris Box as well. I mean, those sort of shows are really sort of well-received for the listener. So live's always going to be better for, for the man running the station, but I'm never going to drop sort of pre-recorded shows that the audience love. Well, those, some of those uh, presenters have been with you a long time, haven't they? Well, I, I was talking to Mike on Sunday, and he was with me with the last station I ran. And uh, so Mike's been with me. We worked it out 20-plus years Goodness. Wow, it's a long time. So what's, yeah. the, what, what's the percentage uh, of, of listeners? How, how would you say it went between DAB, Internet, and let's say TuneIn and the Starport app? What's the biggest uh, audience? I would have imagined it's TuneIn. You know, that might be a bit of a surprise to everyone, but TuneIn is sort of very popular with, uh, with Joe Public to listen to. Our app as well is doing quite well. Unfortunately, with DAB now, we can't actually give any uh, audience figures for that because you know it's a trial DAB that comes to an end in March I will tell you that now and we're waiting for Ofcom to see what decisions they do with the future of DAB. Is that all DAB? Is that Brighton as well? Or? That's It's all the trial DABs the ones that we're on. We're not talking about the uh, the main DABs that have carried the sort of bit more familiar commercial stations, the ones that are carrying the smaller ones, the Chris Radios and the, the Delights and stuff like that. Those uh, ones that were, tr those DABs were trial for a few years, Ofcom trying to open up the uh, radio scope to a lot of smaller stations like Starpoint. And uh, the trial comes to an end in March, so we're waiting to see what Ofcom decide. Well, let's, let's keep our fingers crossed on that one. <laughs> So we, we've got DAB in Brighton. Um, have you thought about having a float on, let's say, uh, Brighton's Gay Pride? 
have a starport well, float. Well, you know what? There's so many things we're, we're thinking, as you know, that we're going to do at Brighton. I mean, we've already got uh, a team ready of me and you to go down there and sort of promote the fact that we're on there. So I'm hoping we're going to do that in the next few weeks. And and anything like that, the gay pr- pr- thing and uh, Brighton, yeah, for sure. Let's get a float going. Because yeah, you know that's a big event in Rise, isn't the Gay Pride? And I think Starpoint Float would be great. Have Nigel Fox on there doing a bit of DJing in his drag, you know? Yeah, and Steve <laughs> King. We could we've got to have Steve King down there as well. We can't leave him out. <laughs> yeah, he's got, a long, he's got a long way to travel. So this, yeah. this is a question I'm going to put to you that you want to put to me. Who's mm-hmm. the most annoying DJ or irritating DJ on Starpoint Radio? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not going to answer that. Just to save, just to save uh, face. You, you know, there's always. Listen, you you've got thirty odd DJs. You're not going to get on with everybody, you know. But we try our very best to get on with as many of them as we can. But what I sort of really demand from a lot of the DJs is is just a bit of consistency. Let's do your shows every week. If you can't do your show, let us know that we can get someone else to do it. If you don't do that, then you're going to have a problem with me. If somebody wants to join Starpoint Radio, what do they have to do? Well, they'd have to give us a demo tape. I mean, we've got to the stage now, really, where most of the top presenters we, presenters, we probably know them anyway. So if it's someone that we know, then and we know they do a, a, a good job in terms of presenting as well as selecting the music, because that is a talent in itself. Everyone thinks it's just easy to play music. I'll become a DJ. It's not as easy as that you do need to have some sort of an ear for the tracks you do need to know vo- vocally what to say as well so really if you want to come on starpoint you'd have to send us a demo tape or a radio show that you've done in the past that you're happy with so credibility for starpoint apart from being a lot of live shows beyond 24 hours a day also the uk soul charts part of uh, the uh, starpoint's family isn't it yeah well, do you, this was quite funny because the last radio station I was on, I was one of my partners. We had a heated debate about a chart show. They, they were already running a chart, and I thought it was a silly name for a chart. And I said, let's do the UK Soul Chart. And I, I lost the argument, and thank God, because then I took it. When we started, up, we resurrected Starport again. And I think it's 15 years we've been on the internet now, I think. Something crazy like that. And at that time, we, you know, I thought, you know what, there's a, there's a gap in the market here. Let's do a proper chart. You know, Gary Lee was around at that time, RIP to him. And he was very, inf- he, he loved the idea. And he, so he got hold of the artist. We started doing stats. We started listening to who was playing what, contacting record shops to get a chart going. And here we are sort of, I don't know, 12 to 15 years later. And if the truth be told, it is the leading chart coming out of any country for soul music. And um, how did you come up with the name Starpoint? All right, that's a good one. Uh, we, Starpoint is my, at the time was one of my favourite bands, and we was at the back of a sh- the back of the shop at Brixton in, in Vision Hire, and uh, me and Chris Phillips were sat there. He said Starlight, and then I went Starpoint, and that's how we came up with the station. Brilliant. So, what plans do you have for Starpoint? Future well, you plans? know what? Let's see. I mean, we're we're launching on Radio Player pretty soon we're just waiting for spot to get back into the country to get us on radio player which is uh, an app that is a uh, it's an app for you know everyone would say the more the more established stations your capitals and your bbc stuff they're all on it so because we're on dab now found a loophole that they now have to include us so we will be going on the industry radio player pretty soon i would love to get us on dab in london but the uh, the chances are at the moment not looking good. So we're just happy with the internet. I mean, it seems to be doing a quick, a, a very good job job for us. And we are getting, we are attracting a bigger audience every day. There's new people tuning in. So it's in, it's all encouraging. So on your other head, you're also like the new Freddie Laker of Soul Holidays as well, aren't you? <laughs> but who, sorry? Freddie Laker of Soul oh, Holidays. Freddie Laker. Yeah, you know, I might. I don't know. Well, possibly, yeah, possibly, yeah. All right. Well, we do we do bowl soul, which is, and I do that with a guy called Ian Dewhurst. Nothing to do with Starpoint Radio. Let's make that clear, because everyone seems to think he's my partner on the radio as well. When he's not, he's not getting any glory out of me for free. But he, I do it with Ian, who's the known for master cuts and 
a lot of other sort of um, CDs that he's put out over the years. And we just run a couple of events to Croatia, one being Bowl Soul, which is sort of really taken off in the last couple of years that's now attracting three to 400 people. And we're doing Bowl Beats in May, which is a bit more eclectic music types, jazz, funk, soul, quite everything really goes for Bowl Beats. And that's getting sort of, it's looking like over 100 people booked for May already. And you kind of whispered that you and Ian might be doing a forthcoming show on Starpoint. Well, we we did we have done shows in the past, haven't we? Where we've done a Bowl Soul special, or we've just you know, and I'm sure that will happen again. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, give him a slap. If he, if he, give him a slap. He, yeah, you know how lazy he is to do anything. <laughs> so it's slap. very hard to get him motivated, and he's always moaning about being 65. It's just an age old boy. <laughs> so, so we're coming to the end of our interview. So is there anything yeah. you'd like to say to the listeners? What well, all I'd like to say, you know, if you guys are listening and you're taking the time to listen to us, we really do appreciate it. Word of mouth is so powerful in radio. So, guys, if you're listening to us and you like what we do, tell your friends. It's always the best way for us and appreciate your ears. And also, as well, while I've got the time, again, thanking all the DJs. Remember, all these DJs on Starpoint, 30 plus of them, they do not get paid. You know, a lot of guys don't understand this. This is very much a low, uh, it's a, it's an inexpensive hobby for a lot of these guys. And some of them it's I- expensive too. So I just want the listeners to know that, you know, the DJs supply their own equipment for their own studios, their own broadband. They pay for it all themselves. So bear that in mind when something might not be right. Hang on a second. Donations, please, to Gary Van and Richard PayPal. No, just <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for joining us here today. It's been yeah. fantastic. Anybody you'd like to say thank you to? Or... Um, you know what? I'd like to thank my mother. Can I thank my mother at this time? The dearest woman to me in, in the world, and I think most people know that. We're not having the best of times with my mother, but love to my mother and love to all the listeners and all the DJs and everyone that supports Starpoint, Bowl Soul, Bowl Beats, the UK Soul Chart in whatever way you do. Thank you so much. Thank you, Carl. Thanks for joining and we wish your mother uh, better health. Thank you yeah. for coming on the show today. Thank you. We love and you. To your mum as, and to your mum as well, Gary. Thank you very much. She's listening. Thank you. Yeah, good, good. What a woman your mother is. I absolutely love her. I've had a couple of conversations with her on the phone, and she sounds, sounds just a charming lady. Well, she just kind of fancies you. She thinks you look like a kind of James Bond, you know, to her. Ooh, <laughs> James it? Bond. That's the first time I've been... Uh, well, I've been called a spy once or twice before, for sure. No, I think she thinks you look a bit like Luther. She thinks you're you know, a, a bit of a, a good-looking chap, so to speak. Mm, don't want to comment on that. <laughs> There's always one person that thinks that, isn't there? <laughs> yeah, but I think I think that's a spec saver job, surely. <laughs> you take care, Carl. Have yourself you a did. fantastic day. And thanks for what you do to, for the station as well, Gary. You coming on has really brought us leaps and bounds the last couple of years, and thank you as well, mate. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. Take care. Ciao, ciao. This is Starpoint Radio.